Good morning, everyone. My name is the Reverend Ted Harrison. Welcome to Trinity United Church in North Bay. Today, this Sunday, we have a lot of birthdays on this day and around this day. But today in particular is Brad Stenning's birthday. It is Liam Sanders' birthday. It is Kirk Elliott's birthday. It is Anna Marie Campbell's birthday. It is Marjorie Quenville's birthday. And it is also the birthday of William Shakespeare. Why, if he hadn't died, William Shakespeare would be 459 years old today, this very day. So, so often uh, here at Trinity, we don't take uh, very much notice of William Shakespeare's birthday because, well, in large part because it's usually eclipsed by Earth Day, which of course was yesterday. But today is kind of an exceptional day. Our lay leader today is Rod Carley, who you'll see later. Um, Rod Carley is retiring this summer from his role as the head of the Canada or College Drama Department, and he and his dear spouse, our own beloved Marion Robinson, who's uh, at the back of the church, will no longer be full-time residents here in North Bay. So this seems like a good day to remember Shakespeare, um, about whom Rod is something of an expert, and to remember the Shakespeare plays and the other dramatic productions that have blessed this community and, and, this, and this sanctuary space right here. So today's worship is going to have, this is all by way of, to, to let you know that today's worship is going to have something of a Shakespearean flavor. So if you've ever enjoyed Shakespeare, well, today is going to be a treat. And if Shakespeare was the bane of your high school English literature <laughs> existence, well, give it a chance, but it is possible that this Sunday might not make, you know, your, your top ten. I would have got Rod to dress up in his Shakespearean finery, but I think he's already uh, packed up his like Shakespearean tickle trunk. Uh, so, so here's some announcements that you need to know about. Well, on, on a Friday night was, the, was our Trinity Coffee House, and it was very well attended. We had some fantastic talent there, and it, it's wonderful that we're blessed with music, but there was some other stuff too. There was some poetry, and there was, was some comedy, and, uh, and that, that was, so it really made for a variety show. Um, I do not have an official report, but I know that we made somewhere in the area of $700 for Trinity's outreach and programming. And just a few other announcements. The Trinity Testosterone Men's Canoe Adventure uh, sign-up is available downstairs right now. We have uh, uh, 19 or 20 uh, volunteers signed up. Um, you will have only a couple more weeks to join Reverend Ted's Secret Book Club. We already have a couple dozen members, which means that maybe we'll have like about three separate book parties. And if we get another 10 people or so, we'll probably add another book party because we like to kind of keep them small and, and fun and intimate. In May, we'll, we'll be taking pictures for our new church directory. And if you don't know how to book your photo appointment online, call the church office and we'll set you up. Um, and after church today, we are offering everybody lunch. Join us for lunch. Come downstairs. Join us. During lunch, we're going to listen in on the plan for Faith Forward 2030. And if, because if the United Church has a future in North Bay uh, in the year 2030, we need to plan for that future. And by the end of the meeting, the Trinity Board will be welcoming volunteers and nominations for a Faith Forward Visioning Team. So if you're unable to be with us, maybe you're with us uh, via, uh, via YouTube or television right now, and you want further information or involvement, please be in touch with the Trinity Office ASAP because that effort is going to get underway. Next Sunday, Trinity is closed. We are worshiping together uh, at St. Andrew's down the road, but we are open during the afternoon, of course, because we are hosting uh, Eclectically Celtic, the Rapport concert next uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. So uh, make sure to remember that. Oh, and Wednesday, this upcoming Wednesday, is the Barrel Boys. So if, you, if you're up for some bluegrass here in this space, I'll see you here on Wednesday. Friends, we gather on the sacred soil of the Anishinaabe people of the Nipsing First Nations, who for hundreds of years have lived on this land, honoring the Creator and living in harmony with creation. We acknowledge their stewardship and their relationship with this land and its plants, its animals, and its waterways. I am going to invite, I am inviting Graham, Graham Shaver, Graham, Earth to Graham, I'm inviting Graham to come up and lead us in our call to worship. Good morning, Trinity family. My name is Graham Shaver. 
My favorite thing about Trinity is that there's so much people and so much activities and things we can do together. Please join me now in our responsive call to worship as printed in your bulletin. How do we find you, Holy One? Where can the seeking heart go? How do things go so wrong sometimes? Where do we lose our way, O oh God? Now let's sing Voices United number 264, the Nobel Laureate William Phillips calls Immortal Invisible, a great hymn for physicists. This is United, number 264. It feels like a while since we sung that one. That was that was great. <clears throat> okay, Rod, you want, Rod, you want to try this one on for, for size? Now I want spirit to enforce and to enchant, and my ending is despair unless I be relieved by prayer. It's from the tempest. <laughs> Unless I be relieved by prayer. As it turns out, we are relieved by prayer every Sunday with our prayer of confession. We'll pray, and then we're going to sing a verse of Come and Find the Quiet Center. And as we sing Come and Find the Quiet Center, I'm going to invite any of the kids or families to kind of join us over here um, with some help from Darlene. We're going to talk about our Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare's birthday and about what, what it takes to put on a drama. But before you come up, we'll pray, and then we'll, and you can come up as we sing. Let us pray. Loving God, in your mercy, do not judge me as others judge me. Grant me grace that I might not judge others. Keep me courageous and willing. Do not cut me off from my enemies, but teach me how to befriend. Forgive and embolden us to be more forgiving.
Here's another one. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesses him that gives and him that takes. Merchant of Venice. Oh, and Darlene got it. Oh, oh, and Noreen got it. Good work. Good work. Friends, God loves you as you are. Nonetheless, that love will transform you. Accept God's forgiveness and allow it to soften your heart with gratitude and reassurance. Amen. And now we sing. <clears throat> Sorry, and as we're singing, I'm inviting your young people to come up and uh, join us for a conversation about theater at Trinity. <laughs> Sorry, Betty. Good morning, guys. You're all welcome to come up here. You, you, can sit, you can sit in these pews here if you want, or you can be on the floor. <clears throat> Darlene, as many of you guys know, is there anyone here who's in the play this year? Who's, who's, who's in the, oh, what's uh, the, the parable? The, the not-so-terrible parable. The not-so-terrible parable. Let's see some hands. Okay, so some of you guys, you can know that this is our, our director supreme right here, Darlene. And Darlene has brought with her better put on my director's sunglasses. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I can barely see now. <laughs> Darlene has, has in, this, in this box some, some of the secrets that it takes to put on a drama. Like, I was asking Darlene, what does it take? You know, how hard could it be to put on a play here at Trinity? What does it take? And so Darlene's going to walk us through some of the things required to put on a play at Trinity. Okay. Well, first of all, I would be remiss if I didn't put on the orange scarf in recognition of Ione, who was the first drama director at Trinity, and she had Trinity Troupe. And they put on a number of plays, and that was quite a while ago, so I'll wear the orange scarf for Ione. Let me see, what else have I got in here? Oh! What's this? Oh, look out. What do you think I would use this for? Building. Building, right? We build the set. And see this box here? This was built by Mr. Rideout. Mr. Rideout built this, and we've used these boxes in a lot of our plays. So I'm sure he used a hammer. And what are these? Paint brushes, right. And these boxes have been painted a number of colors. And we also use the paint brushes to paint the sets. And Nancy Dewar Stenning helps us with a lot of those backdrops for our, for our sets. And you can see some of them downstairs in the nursery. Uh, let's see, one of the most important people is our producer. And Lisa Blay is our producer. And she gets our tickets and our programs, and she gets the posters for us. So this is from Godspell, and... What year was that? There's no year. Oh, oh 2008. There we are. Yeah. And one of the most important pieces on this is that it was sponsored by Trinity United Church, UCW, and the AOTS. So everyone in the church helps us by sponsoring the shows, and that gives us our little bit of money to pay for the scripts and costumes and things like that. Here's something else we need. What do you think this is for? Music. It's for the music, that's right. And we have some very talented musicians at Trinity who've helped us with our plays. Sometimes we had a whole band. When we did Cotton Patch Gospel, we even had a banjo. So we've had drums. I think Chris has played the drums for us. And we've had guitar. Marcel has played guitar for us. And I can't name everyone, so I'm just going to stop there. <laughs>
And let's see. Oh, something that we have at the back of the church, and Michael's helping me today. I'm wearing a microphone. Yeah. Yeah. And we that helps all, us to hear. We need yeah. all those tech people. We need our tech people to do the lights and the sound. That is bright. Yeah, and that's to help the audience see us on the stage. And let's see what else is in here. Oh, a hat. And that's part of our costumes. <laughs> Everyone needs costumes that's, to change their identity that's for the play. right. And, oh, sometimes we have dancing or choreography in our plays. And we might need special shoes, like tap shoes. Yeah, I have those at my dance class. Do you? Ooh. You're kind of wearing tap shoes, too. And we do lots of dancing in our plays, don't we? Can, it, can we show everybody how you raise your hands up over your head and wave your hands from side to side? Do you think that the congregation can do that? Raise Ooh. your hands up and wave your hands from side. <laughs> See, they could be in a play. They're doing their choreography. Yeah, anybody can be in a play. And do you know, do you know what this is? It's the Holy Bible, but it's, it's in our play. It's a prop. So we have someone in our play who is a Bible salesman, and this is their prop that they carry onto the stage. And there is a water bottle because <laughs> it's very important for us to stay hydrated and have our snacks, right? Our, and our actors, the, it's like an army. They run on their stomach, That's right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, and here's a T-shirt. And this is part of our swag that we get when we're in a play. And Lisa, our producer, helps us get these T-shirts that we can wear. And this is from when we did... Dream On. Do you remember that, Rod? When we did Dream On? It was a Shakespearean yeah. piece. <laughs> yeah. Brahma was in it. That's right. And probably the most important thing. What is this? It's the script. And what does the script do? What does the script do? What, Mel? Sure. We do that. Yeah, well, sometimes during our, our practice, we go to the gym and, and have a, burn off a little energy, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so in our script, we have lots of scribbly marks that the director makes to show where everyone's going to move. And what was that special word we used for that? When I put you in special places? Blocking. 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 So that tells everyone where they need to be. A position is also a word for a place. You're right. Right. So that's a lot of the things that we need wow. for putting on a play. Thank you, Darlene. So those, those of you who are involved in the play, you are not the only ones who are involved in the play because there's so many people, right? Including our, our AOTS, our UCW, many of our musical people. There's so, it takes a whole community to put on a play. So I'm going to ask you guys to put your praying hands together. And we're going to pray about this. Dear God. Dear God. It takes a village. Thank you for Trinity. Thank you for drama. Thank you for drama. Amen. And now let's sing together the prayer that Jesus has given to us.
Thank you so much, Darlene, for walking us through the process, the endless process of putting on a play. We will see you guys after church um, and after Sunday school, and we're going to uh, we're going to have lunch together. So we'll see you guys then. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Rod Carley, and I've been a member of Trinity for 12 years. And I thought I'd share a little quote from the Bard, and this is for you, Noreen, because it's from the Merchant of Venice. And this is kind of what Shakespeare, in some ways, said about celebrating birthdays. With mirth and laughter, let old wrinkles come. <laughs> okay. And I thought of. Well, here's two ill-advised ways to celebrate the Bard's birthday today. These are for you, Sandy, because I know how much you love Shakespeare, okay? And we'll see if you can guess the play. So two, two really bad ideas for celebrating Shakespeare's birthday today is you can fake your own death, but you don't want to be stupid about it, so make sure a clergy member tells you that it's okay first. Anyone? Romeo and Juliet. Okay, and the other one, we already saw it a little bit up on the screen earlier. Trick your significant other into developing feelings for an ass. No, I mean like a literal ass, a donkey. There we go. Okay, super. Okay, uh, yeah, as, as Ted mentioned, uh, I just want to share a, a few quick words here. Uh, I am retiring from Canada this year, though I'm not really retiring. What I'm really doing is I'm creating time to write full time, which is I'm, I'm sort of what I'm transitioning is to so I can fill my life with my writing and, and more freelance directing. And Marion and I, we, we are moving back to our hometown of Brockville. Uh, a lot of reasons, but it's sort of creating a new adventure. Uh, but I've lived in North Bay for 25 years, so it's not exactly like I can leave North Bay behind me. And, um, and Trinity has been such an important part of my life. <laughs> And I'll be back. I'm like a bad penny. You can't get rid of me. Um, I'm going to be back for special events. I'm going to be doing book launches in North Bay, uh, special theater projects. And any time I'm in town, I'll be certainly coming to worship here. And, uh, and in fact, Ted and I were already working on it this December. We're bringing back our Christmas fundraisers because it's been f four years with the pandemic. And we haven't done a Christmas carol in seven years. So we're bringing back a Christmas carol this December as a fundraiser for the Gathering Place, so I'm really looking forward to that, okay? And it's a slow move for us, so you're stuck with us until the end of July, okay? Okay. Um, for our scripture reading this morning, we're going to be reading responsive prayer from our Red Voices United Hymn Book, and we're reading Psalm 90, and, uh, and Ted mentioned that he is giving particular attention to verse 12, that prayer to God, that God will teach us to count our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. No, Betty's going to play through the refrain, and we'll sing it once, and then we'll read through the psalm. And Betty's going to play it first before we sing it. Okay. have been our refuge in every generation. Before the mountains were brought forth, before the earth and world were formed, from age to age everlasting, you are God. 
you turn frail humans back to dust, saying, return, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, a day that is past, a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream, like grass that is fresh in the morning, like grass which in the morning is green, but in the evening it is dried up and withered. Your anger consumes us. Your wrath overwhelms us. All our days pass away under your anger. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The lives are 70 years, even 80 if we are strong. But all that the years bring is toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Yet who understands the power of your anger? Who considers the fierceness of your wrath? Teach us to count our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn back, O oh God, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us, as many years as we have suffered adversity. Show your servants your work and let their children see your glory. Let the favor of our God be upon us and prosper the work of our hands. Prosper the work of our hands. the Spirit is saying to the church, thanks be to God. Now, if you haven't closed your hymn book quite yet, all you need to do now is turn the page, because at Voices United Hymn 806, there's a musical setting of the same psalm we just read. In the 18th century, Isaac Watts paraphrased Psalm 90 in his famous hymn, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. Well, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past is a little bit like Immortal Invisible that we already sang. And these are hymns about God's vastness and transcendence. Uh, it seems that, oh God, our help in ages past emphasizes that vastness in time. It measures the timeless eternity of God's existence against our brief, limited, little human moment of life on this earth. As in the psalm, there's no talk about an afterlife. It's interested in the brief, successive generations of this life. So let's sing together, Voices United, 806, O oh God, our help in ages past.
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, God, for you are our only rock. Amen. So as we read, uh, and, and as Rod mentioned, uh, in Psalm 90, we pray that God will teach us to count our days. And for those of us worshiping uh, in person here in the sanctuary today, we have on our bulletins the, the, famous, uh, the text of a famous Shakespeare uh, monologue in which one of Shakespeare's memorable characters, Jakey's in, uh, in, in the comedy As You Like It, he, in a sense, counts his days. Uh, you see, uh, I'm, I'm squeezing our drama people for, for all they're worth today, and, and before, before Rod leaves town, we're squeezing him for all he's worth, and so he is going to introduce you to the famous speech, and if you have the copy in front of you, you're going to be able to, to follow along. Sir Roderick. Thank you, Ted. So before I uh, uh, share this monologue, I'm going to give you a really quick context uh, from what, what Ted was sharing. Um, in the play, there's a group of lords who have been banished into the forest of Arden, and there's a duke and his brother, Frederick, is the evil duke, is now running the, in, in the court. And so they've been forced to live in the woods, um, much like northern Ontario, and somehow survive through the winter and whatnot and face a lot of adversity. But they are managing to because of their faith. And one of these lords who's with them is a character named Jaques. Jaques, however, isn't doing so well. Um, he's been a libertine most of his life. He's wasted his life. Uh, he's fallen from his faith. He's a melancholy soul and much of a loner, and he's quite cynical. So in this speech, uh, he's sharing it with all the lords, I'd imagine, around a campfire, kind of like the Trinity Testosterone, right? And he's kind of sharing this speech with the lords, and it's sort of his viewpoint on life. And there's a moment, I think, later where he kind of has a bit of epiphany when he kind of realizes that it's been kind of about him. All right. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his act being seven ages. At first, the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms. Then, the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face creeping like snail, unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress' eye, brow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths, and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden, quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly with good cape on lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts to the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved, a world too wide for his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble pipes and whistles in their sound. The last scene that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere Oblivion, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. How about a hand for Trinity's Bard? Trinity's resident bard. So that was from a play, and it's almost hard to believe when you, do, when you hear that in isolation that the play is a comedy, for goodness sake, called As You Like It. And by its very title, As You Like It, it, 
it, it, the play tells us that it has everything that the audience was looking for, right? It has, uh, it has romance, it has, it has mix-ups, it, ha it has laughs, it has a happy ending, and it has this like profound and sad um, speech about the futile succession of life's chapters. It's like centuries before like Sartre and Camus and Kierkegaard Shakespeare's the guy who was like the original um, despairing existentialist, right? So he, le he lists these seven stages of a man's life, and there's this inescapable sense of bitterness and despair, right? Like he, like he hasn't figured it out until it's too late. Um, you, you may not have picked up, uh, well, many of us are, are, are able to read along here. Did you notice that there's this emphasis on... Um, on noises, on noises, on human communication. At each stage of life, humanity expresses itself. So the, the, the infant mules, kind of sounds like a cat, mules. Um, and then the schoolboy whines, and the lover sighs. And the soldier is full of strange oaths, which makes me think maybe he's cussing on the battlefield or making you know, outrageous romantic promises that he has no intention of keeping. <clears throat> The judge is full of wise saws, which means he's sort of, um, he's sort of uh, probably, uh, you know, quoting, parroting conventional wisdom. Then as he ages, he pipes and whistles. I liked the whistle, Rod. And until that very last line, and as Rod read it, I could hear the, I could hear the successive sibilance of S's. Sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans. It's as if at this final seventh stage, the old man literally whispers himself from this life. Jakey's famous speech is not altogether different from Psalm 90. <laughs> They say that time flies, but no, time doesn't fly. Time stays. We disappear. Shakespeare has Richard II in one of his plays saying, I wasted time, now time doth waste me. For the psalmist, that is the author of the, uh, of the biblical psalm, Psalm 90, this is simply how the world is. This is how God has ordained things. Our years come to an end like a sigh. That's, we read that in the psalm, although it sounds an awful lot like Shakespeare to me. <clears throat> Shakespeare would have known this psalm in its, uh, in its King James setting, uh, which was written, uh, which was, you know, sort of translated during his, during his lifetime. And that, uh, the 12th verse concludes like this. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Now, we in the United Church typically, I mean, we read all, all versions, and they're all legit, but we typically read the New Revised Standard Version, which is updated to read not um, uh, to number our days, but teach us to count our days. Count our days, by which we should understand, of course, not just teach us to count our days, but teach us to make our days count. And isn't that really at the center of the good life? Isn't this the point of faithfulness? That at each of those, okay, seven, we'll go with seven stages of life, that we have the opportunity to get it right. Jakey's messed it up, apparently. Um, for him, each exit and entrance has kind of slipped him by and left him flat-footed. He doesn't join in. He doesn't live into any of those roles on the world stage. He's just kind of bitter and unfulfilled, and, and ultimately, uh, he withdraws from life. He's not bothering to count his days. Which is ironic because, he, I mean, he's not done. He hasn't died yet, right? I mean, he might be on stage six or stage seven, but he still has those stages to kind of live and get right. He can make good on his own insight, right? Like, he, he can start counting his days. As can we. 
whoever you are, whatever you've done, you're not finished. Life is not done with you. God is not done with you. God has gifted each one of us, every one of us, with so many marvelous capacities. In fact, life isn't even long enough to, to, to explore all the avenues that life offers us, right? We, have, we all have creativity and, and friendship to offer. We all have uh, talents and insights and, and songs to share. We all have material wealth with which to make a difference in the world. We have skills with which to, uh, with which to enrich our communities. Mad skills, which demand to be shared, right, with generosity. Well, you remember how each stage of life makes its own sounds, you know? According to Jakey's, uh, there's these, no these noises, the mewling and the puking and the sighing and the whining and the cussing and the cursing and the wisdom and the, and the, whisp the whispering. In other words, each stage of life expresses itself into the world somehow. So how will you express yourself at your present stage? How will that change from the previous stage that you've left behind you? Do you know what stage you're in right now? And how you will make your days count? It's, it's not too late. We're all between chapters, right? We're get with the program, start counting. That's, that's Psalm 90 is telling us. All the world's a stage. I mean, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that delightful? You get to play many parts. Isn't that strange and, and beautiful? This life doesn't last forever, which lends it a, a preciousness and an urgency out of which we pray, teach us to count our days, O Lord, that we might acquire a heart of wisdom. Teach us to count our days. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you.
Well, that was delightful. That, uh, we, re- we really needed that song because um, I don't know if people realize that there's, a, there's an old tradition that we do not sing hallelujahs during the season of Lent. And then some churches observe the tradition that every Sunday in Easter, which is a 50-day season, you have to sing a song that has hallelujah in it. If we didn't sing that one, we wouldn't have had our hallelujah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Betty. <clears throat> Let me say uh, thank you to everyone for your generosity in supporting Trinity. And now in addition to pre-authorized remittance and e-transfers, you can give with your phone on that fancy schmancy (laughs) QR code. There it is right there. Uh, We're not passing the offering plate, but there are two of them at the back. And thank you everyone, everyone within earshot. Thank you for your generosity in supporting the mission of Trinity. And of course, we have people who support us not only with treasure, but also with your time and your prayers and your expertise, as uh, Darlene uh, uh, illustrated with our, with our box of, uh, of, of community members, basically. Um, often your prayers have hands and legs, and you donate your time and your energy. Thank you. Yesterday was Earth Day. Uh, Most of this morning we've been talking about Shakespeare and about Psalm 90, but maybe here in the prayers of the people we can give some attention to Earth Day concerns and about how um, living with respect in creation is so important about how we live our lives of Christian faith. So let's pray that God will bless our giving and our stewardship of this good earth with a traditional Earth Day prayer. Let us pray. God, you have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in making us stewards of the earth. We pray for your world that we may share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with one another. You have given the human race a rich land, a land of streams and springs, wheat and barley, vines and oil and honey. We have made by sin a world of suffering and sorrow. We pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. In Christ, you call us to a new way of life, loving our neighbors before ourselves. Help us to treat with care and respect the world as it is, as we live in hope and anticipation of the world as it will be, when your kingdom comes and your will is done. Thank you for those living and departed who have shown a true respect for your creation. Help us to follow in their footsteps until with them we see you face to face, where all is made new in Christ our Lord. Amen. So, of course, our psalm today uh, was uh, about the limitations of living life and the the brief chapters that we are given, each chapter following on the last one, and try as best we can to live those chapters, those, those acts, those stages in a faithful way. Our final hymn is also about the passage of time and how the passage of time reveals the glory of its creator. So let's open our Voices United hymn books to number 530, hymn number 530, all beautiful What is it? All all beautiful, the March of Days, 530.
You're, you're welcome to remain standing if you wish. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you to the choir. Thank you to the Sunday school downstairs. Thank you to our technicians and our ushers and our greeters and our volunteers. Friends, come downstairs and join us for coffee. Oh, well, not only for coffee, but for lunch. We are officially launching Faith Forward 2030. It will be very exciting. And so please allow today's blessing to function as a grace for our lunch uh, downstairs. Until we worship together again at St. Andrew's next week, may God bless us all like that Shakespeare's uh, King Henry VI, that we could look into the face of one another and say, O oh Lord, that lends me life. Lend me a heart replete with thankfulness, for thou hast given me in this beauteous face a world of earthly blessings to my soul, if sympathy of love unite our thoughts. Or I could just say, friends, may the God of hope go with you every day. In Jesus' name, amen.